Does scoliosis worsen over time? When people are initially diagnosed with scoliosis, one of the biggest concerns that are, is always portrayed to me is they want to know if it's going to worsen over time. And unfortunately, scoliosis is something uh, called a progressive problem, a progressive disorder, and meaning that it does worsen over time. It worsens either rapidly or slowly, but it does worsen. And at some point, you're going to see the progression of the problem, and normally that would lead to more worsening problems that it's causing in your body and your health. The, the issue here is there's no way to tell exactly how much your curve is going to progress. There are indicators and there are some things that actually can help point in terms of whether we think the curve is going to start progressing faster or slow, but the problem is there's no way to tell. Um, age, gender, the type, where it is can definitely affect, but the biggest thing when it comes to how much a curve progresses would be growth. We know growth is the number one cause of progression or the thing that causes progression to happen the fastest. So we have kids that move from a juvenile stage into adolescent stage and they're going through puberty. We know growth has the biggest risk of progression. How big your curve is when you go into a growth phase is when it really how determines how much a curve is going to worsen during this stage. However, there's no way to predict it. So meaning if we have two 10 degree curves going into puberty at the exact same time, one curve can only progress to 15 while the other curve progresses to 115. The biggest curve I've ever seen in a child has been over 155 degrees. So curves can progress very, very rapidly during this time. In the adult stage, it's not because of growth. It's because of gravity over time. Curves worsen slowly over time because of gravity causing compression to the spine and it tends to increase slowly and like a snowball and kind of slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as it gets bigger, the bigger it gets, the, rap the faster it tends to progress in later years of life. So when we look at to determine the severity of these curves, we're looking at something called a Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle is something that you do to measure the size of a scoliosis and it's measured in degrees. So you measure like a 25 degree curve or a 30 degree curve or a 50 degree curve. Curves that are, uh, that are measured and diagnosed, they, they're given a scale of severity, meaning mild curves are less than 25 degrees. Between 25 and 40 to 45 degrees is considered a moderate scoliosis. Anything greater than 40 to 45 is considered severe. And I always have like a fourth category I call very severe scoliosis is when curves are like 80 degrees or greater. We know scoliosis is incurable, but it's definitely treatable, meaning that we can treat the scoliosis and manage the progressive state and how it worsens over time. The main form of scoliosis is something called idiopathic. 90% of scoliosis cases in children are something called idiopathic cases. And idiopathic really stands for unknown cause. We have no idea what's causing the curve to actually occur, but it doesn't always mean that it's going to change how we're going to treat it. Meaning, if we knew exactly what caused a person's scoliosis, we're still going to probably going to treat the scoliosis like a scoliosis because most of the time they're diagnosed the cause of the scoliosis was many years before and it's almost irrelevant at this point because the curve itself has become its own problem so in many cases knowing the cause may not change the outcome the only time the cause would have made a difference if you were able to deal with the cause right when it happened. But normally when that happens, you don't know scoliosis is occurring and it's normally diagnosed many years later as the curve progresses. So how do you stop scoliosis from getting worse? Well, first of all, you have to understand when it comes to taking care of scoliosis, nothing is 100% guaranteed to actually reduce curves and nothing is actually 100% guaranteed to stop curves from progressing. Because when curves start progressing, especially in long stage life or long or in late stage life, it's gravity is what's causing it. So since gravity is what's causing the curve to progress, it's very difficult to say this is going to 100% stop your curve from progressing because the causation is something we can't remove, which is gravity over time. In adolescence, what's causing the curve to progress is growth. Again, we can't stop growth. So therefore, since we can't stop what's causing the progression, it's not always 100% guaranteed it's gonna stop progression, but we do know the more proactive you are, the more likely you are to stop your curve from progressing, meaning the number one indicator that's gonna, that, that puts you at risk for progression is the size of your curve. So directly correlated that the bigger your curve becomes, the more likely it is to worsen during growth or gravity. So it would make sense to keep curves small. Unfortunately, the traditional approach it has a very strong emphasis on watching and waiting and doing nothing 
until you hit the severe category, which was when surgery is recommended where they put rods and screws in your spine to now reduce your curve. And the reason why they have to wait to the severe category because surgery itself has a very invasive and a very uh, life altering uh, surgery. It has a lot of risk associated with it. So therefore they have to wait for the curve to hit the severe category to justify or warrant the use of such an invasive treatment. However, it would make much more sense to reduce a curve when it's smaller to reduce the risk of progression during growth or the long-term gravity as an adult. However, they really have no good options for you. So I always like to say good conservative approaches tend to be more proactive as opposed to traditional traditional approaches tend to be more reactive. However, if you want to be more proactive, you need to find a treatment that's going to address all the components when it comes to scoliosis progression. Meaning, if you're just dealing with exercises, just doing therapy, or maybe just getting some adjustments, or doing one little piece, scoliosis is not an injury. It doesn't respond to traditional treatment type plans that are helped to help treat injuries. Scoliosis is a developmental problem that's progressing rapidly during growth or slowly over time uh, in, in, in an adult stage, but either way, they're very resi- it's very resistant to reduction. So doing this low dose, long therapy over a long time has very little uh, reduction or impact on a progressing scoliosis in either stage. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we use very specific types of care. Not only specific scoliosis chiropractic care, we use in-office therapy, we use customized home therapy exercises, corrective bracing, home uh, in-office rehab, and everything's designed specifically for the patient and their scoliosis. And the goal is to address the structure of the spine, because if we know if we can reduce the structure, we can improve the, uh, the, the person's health and well-being, but most importantly, we can impact how a curve worsens over time. Because the smaller your curve is, the less likely it is to worsen. So the first thing is that you want to be proactive. You definitely want to make small curves smaller because there's no harm in making a small curve smaller. But letting a small curve slowly progress to become a bigger curve can definitely cause a lot more issues and can leave you uh, in in harm's way, meaning that you may be now potentially be exposed to more invasive treatments like surgical fusion. And, and severe surgeries and maybe even multiple surgeries over your lifetime. So finding a scoliosis early, being proactive and reducing small curves is the best way to stop your curve from worsening. If your curve has already worsened over time and you're looking at doing something to try to stop surgery, well, the sooner you attempt to reduce it, the better results you're gonna have. So we definitely value you being very proactive here at Scoliosis Reduction Center. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.